Hey, I'm Chris. This is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my prediction to World Series of Fighting 26, Palmer versus Almeida, which happens on December 18th. But before I get into that, I'd like to plug my own website at www.chrismoldon.com. I am an aspiring author. And on my website, you can check out blogs, the Writer's Talk videos, uh, web series, free short stories, and uh, even buy stories uh, for sale. Also, my first book, The Muster Prince in the Convent Kingdom, which is a fantasy adventure novel, is coming out on January 1st for uh, $8.95 on my website. So please welcome the new year with The Muster Prince. Okay, on to the card. Uh, good card. Uh, lots of prospects. I mean, it's actually just full of prospects. Lance Palmer, um, Ozzy Dugulubgov, Shaman Marias, Bekbilat Magomedov, Abu Bakar, even on prelims, Abu Bakar uh, Nurmagomedov, Hakim Dawodu, uh, Marat Magomedov. All, for, you know, just a lot of prospects. And actually, it looks like a pretty fun card. I, I like what I see. And, um, you know what? Let's get started. Um, usual disclaimer with World Series of Fighting and Bellator cards. Um, it's that with the main card, I do make it a point to watch video of all the fighters, so at least one or two fights or more. And on the prelims, I'll generally not watch many of the fights at the prelims unless I find out they're like from a good camp or some hot prospect, maybe some like, you know, if it's undefeated and, you know, and maybe a guy to keep an eye out on or something like that. Lucky for me, I've actually seen a good amount of these fighters on the prelims. Uh, save, I haven't seen like David Jordan. I don't remember Gil Godado. Giga Chikadze, it's his first pro MMA fight, so I've never seen video of him. But otherwise, um, I've seen some form of video of the rest of these fighters. So let's get started. On the main event for the World Series of Fighting Featherweight title, we have Lance Palmer versus Alexander Capitao um, Almeida. Alexander Almeida, 17-5 record, two wins by K.R. 13 wins by sub. He also has two losses by submission, 27 years old. He's going to be the much taller fighter at 5'11". He's on a four-fight win streak, training out of Syndicate and uh, one other gym, too. I think it's Orion. He has some strong Brazilian jiu-jitsu skills. Um, he has really good back control, too. Once he takes the back, he can definitely get to choke and keep back control which recently actually beat Saul Almeida in his last fight by taking the back and, and getting the submission. He's also strong off his back, too. He's very active with uh, throwing up different submissions and whatnot and sweeps. The yeah. name of his takedown game is mainly clinch takedowns. He's really relentless about getting those takedowns. His stand-up, though, it's a bit awkward. He doesn't look like a comfortable striker. Lance Palmer, 10 on one record, six wins by sub, four wins by decision, 27 years old. It's going to be a much shorter fight at 5'6". He's on a three-fight win streak, training out of Team Alpha Male. He is a World Series of Fighting featherweight champion, beating uh, Rick Glenn. He's a strong wrestler with really strong top control, and his stand-up has been improving. This is an interesting stylistic matchup because where Palmer's strongest Almeida is also strong, you know, like Palmer has the wrestling, but Almeida's got the jiu-jitsu. So, I mean, Jordi Karakanian did beat Lance Palmer by guillotine. It wasn't really off a takedown. It was kind of in a transitionary period. I can see Almeida possibly getting a takedown off trend or like, maybe taking the back or getting a sub off a transition or something like that. However, I think that Lance Palmer is really strong wrestling. I, I find it very hard for him to get taken down in this fight. I think he will be the better striker here. So I'm going to go with Lance Palmer to win this one by decision. 
Next fight that, Ozzy Degulugov fights Nick Heron Webb. Ozzy Degulugov, 7 and 2 record, 4 wins by KRTK, 2 wins by Sub, 26 years old on a 2 fight win streak, training out of Henzo Gracie's. His stand up, I would, he's closer to a brawl, not really a brawler, but he's a single strike type of guy that throws everything into his strikes. But he's real heavy handed. He knocked out uh, Keon Caldwell out cold, for example. And he's a good wrestler, too. You can watch a fight against, like, Chris Wade, who's, like, a really... He's into UFC now, Chris Wade. He's a really well-known grinder. And Dugulabal was able to take him down, even. Um, Nick Karan Webb, 18-6 and six record, two wins by KO Tico, 14 wins by Sub, and 25 years old on a four-fight win streak. The only fight I saw from Nick Karan Webb, though... It is the Andy Enns fight. And in that fight, I, I only got to see a stand-up. You know, he was in it. You know, he'd go in, throw the overhands and whatnot, throw the occasional leg kick. Um, and he was always kind of like in the fight. Um, unfortunately, I just, I didn't get to see any of his grappling. So I can't really speak about it. But he does have most, 14 of his 18 wins are by submission. So obviously he knows what he's doing on the ground. Nonetheless, I do like what I see out of Ozzy Degulugov. He's a good wrestler, and he hits real hard. I'm going to go with Ozzy Degulugov to win this one by KO or TKO. I just think he can um, land some of his heavy strikes, maybe even utilize his own wrestling on Nick or on Webb as well. So Ozzy Degulugov by KO or TKO. Next right off that, Shaman Marias fights Robbie Peralta. Peralta, 18 and 6 record with one no contest, 13 wins by KO Tico, two wins by sub. He also has three losses by submission. 29 years old on a two fight losing streak. Losses to what? Clay Guida, Tiago Tavares, if I'm not mistaken, in the UFC. Trains out of Team Explode MMA. Name of Peralta's game is a stand up. He is real heavy handed. Um, closer to a brawler than like a technical striker. But um, he's a guy that will really get in there and throw leather. He's got a good chin, too. His takedown defense, decent. Um, you know, against some higher level guys, he was not able to defend takedowns very well. Didn't really seem to know what to do on the ground sometimes. But um, especially against like Tiago Tavares, he just looked lost on the ground. Um, Otherwise, I don't think, you know, the takedowns will be that much of a factor in this fight anyways. Shame on Mariah, 7-1 record, 4 wins by KO Tico, 3 wins by decision, 25 years old, training out of Team Noguera. Uh, Marias has good Muay Thai, really good elbows, really good knees. And he's very pure Muay Thai in the sense where he kind of stalks his opponent, doesn't use a lot of movement or anything like that. Um, not always a combination striker. But um, I have seen him utilize some offensive taking on a body and ground and pound before, and it looked pretty decent turning out Team Noguera. And Shaman Marias' only loss, he's 7 and 1, his only loss is to Marlon Marias. And, you know, you got a 7 and 0 prospect versus Marlon Marias, who's like on a roll right now. You know, you can't expect much from Shaman at that, at that point. In, in his career, it's just not going to happen. He's not going to be a guy like Marlon Marias so so soon in his career. This fight is really tough to call, though. I got to say, I like Shaman Marias to be the more technical fighter, whereas Robbie Peralta, he's a guy that can melt guys. I mean, 13 of his 18 wins are by KO or Tico, and he legit hits pretty hard. When he loses, a lot of his losses have been due to grappling. There was that case of, against like Akira Kurosani, where Kurosani was actually just using a lot more movement and uh, able to beat Peralta by decision. So this one's really hard for, but it, you know, I don't think grappling will play much of a factor here. And if this fight goes is standing, it's anyone's game in a sense. I think Peralta, arguably, you know, and this is quite arguable, probably the harder hitter of the two. But I like the variety of Shaman Marias. I like his technical ability. Tough one to call. Uh, I can see Peralta winning this. Like, honestly, I can see him at 
possibly getting into KO or TKO. But I'll go Shaman Moraes to win this one by decision. Um, tough for me to call, though. Next fight after that, Josh Hill fights Beck Bilat, Magomedov. Get Josh Hill, 12 and 1 record, 3 wins by KO, Tico, 2 wins by sub, 29 years old. It's a shorter fighter at 5 6 on a 2 fight win streak. Um, he's kind of a grinder, you know? He's a good wrestler, kind of a grinder. Stand up, I'd say it's average. He did, though, when he fought Marlon Mar Mar Marias, though, I believe he managed to wobble or even drop him in the first round. Um, so it's got to say something about Hill. And a stand up. It's and actually Josh Hill's only loss is to Marlon Marias. Um so you know he's not a bad fighter at all. Beck Bilat Magomedov, 16 and 0 undefeated record, eight wins by KO Tico, three wins by sub, 25 years old, taller fighter at 5'8. I only saw one of his fights. That's the only one I could find it was against uh Guan Wang. And and that fight, he mainly showed off his wrestling and ground to pound. You know, I mean, it just, he took him down he, and he pounded him out um, to, uh, for the decision. I mean, eight of his 16 wins are by KO or TKO. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, I just didn't get to see much of his striking. I did like what I saw out of his submission grappling, though. Like, he went for like a triangle and then like an arm, like, he went for an arm bar. And when he couldn't get that, he got the he, he went for the triangle and like managed to stay on top. So I, I did like what I saw from his submission grappling though. Um but yeah, this one's tough for me to call. There's I, I don't have I've only managed to see one fight out of Megamedov. But from what I saw from him, I liked what I saw. Um hopefully he can, his wrestling can match Hills, if not maybe even do even better. Might even be better. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I can't speak about Mega Metal stand up, but um, I like what I saw from him. Beck Bilot, Mega Metal, so I'll go with him to win this one by. Um, I'll go by decision. Uh, tough one for me to call, though, because, you know, I only saw one video of him. And, and Josh Hill, he's been around the block, you know. He's fun. He's fought some good competition, Marlon Marias and whatnot. So, yeah. And and on uh, Ultimate Fighter, he beat what, Hollahan, if I'm not mistaken, and grinded him out on the Ultimate Fighter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, next fight after that, Jake Hune fights Clinton Williams. So Clinton Williams, seven and two record with one no contest, two wins by KO Tico, three wins by Sub, thirty one years old. It's a much shorter fighter at five ten, and he actually this fight's at two o five. Uh, Clinton Williams, if I'm not mistaken, he fights at 185. One thing, so I saw Clinton Williams is fighting against uh, this guy named Hatch, something Hatch, and uh, seemed very raw to me. Clinton Williams, you know, striking seemed a bit raw. He did go for like a spinning hook kick that actually connected, which is pretty cool. But it, you know, striking just seemed a bit like. Close to brawling, I guess. I can't really explain it, but it didn't seem like refined. Um, he did show good offensive takedown ability and good ground and pound. He even passed him out a couple times. Jay Kuhn, 8-4 record. Four wins by K.R. Tico, two wins by Sub. All four of his losses are by submission. He's 28 years old. He's a much taller fighter at 6'2". Um, he's fought as high as heavyweight and fights at light heavyweight for this bout. Trains out of ATT. He's a good wrestler. Stand up, I'd say, is average. And his submission defense is pretty weak, actually. Um, even on the Ultimate Fighter, he, he was winning the fight until he got arm barred. Like, the guy was on his back, too, and it was, it was pretty bad. Nonetheless, um, I think Jay Kuhn should be able to do well into what wrestling here. Um, maybe even get his own takedowns. He'll be the much bigger fighter. So I'm going to go JQ to win this one by KO or TKO, like a ground and pound finish or something like that. Okay, on to the prelims. Danny Davis Jr. fights Abu Bakar Nurmagomedov. Danny Davis Jr., 11-9 record with one draw, two wins by KO Tico, two wins by sub. Also, has five losses by submission. 33 years old. It's going to be the, uh, he's pretty tall at 6'2". Trains out of Dry Cell Jiu-Jitsu and Extreme Couture. 
the Maga Madoff, 10 and 1 record, 6 wins by K.O. Tico, 3 wins by Sub. It's on a two fight win streak, training an out of fight spirit team with the likes of Islam Makachev. He is a lot like, like I remember watching his last fight, I, I believe it was on World Series of Fight. He just fights like his brothers. Rossine's really strong, and he can get constant takedowns on his opponent. Stand up looked like that typical Sambo stand up of like looping punches, surprisingly accurate. Not very technical. Hits pretty hard, though. Um, and a lot of single strikes. Um, with that said, I mean, Nurmagomedov, if I'm not mistaken, his only loss is to um, Mustafaev, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's Mustafaev who just destroyed Joe Proctor. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Don't know if it's Mustafaev or someone else. But anyways, with that said, I don't see why Nurmagomedov can't get takedowns here. I mean, he should be able to utilize his superior wrestling to get takedowns. Uh, I can see him possibly take the back or something like that. Uh, Danny Davis Jr., most of his losses are by sub, so I'll go Abu Bakar Nurmagomedov to win this by submission. Next fight of that, David Jordan fights Jonathan, or it's Johnny Nunez. David Jordan, 3-3 three three record, 3 wins by decision. To, uh, on a two fight one streak. Haven't watched any video of him. Jonathan Nunez, five and one record, two wins by KOT kill, one win by sub, 30 years old, training out of syndicate. It's a good wrestler. Stand up's not too bad either. I'd say it's average. If I'm not mistaken, Johnny Nunez does have a pretty good win actually over Ozzy Dugulugov, if I'm not mistaken. Um, with that said, I am going to go Jonathan Nunez to win this one. Probably by decision. Next fight after that, Hakeem Min Dawodu fights Murat Magomedov. So Murat Magomedov, he has a 7-0 undefeated record. Six wins by sub, one win by decision. He's never been past the second round. That one fight that was at, went to decision, it was a two-round fight. He's 25 years old, and I, all I know is that he does have a Sambo background. Tried to find video of the guy. I found one that I believe was not a pro MMA bout, and he lost it by like armbar. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I don't think it was a um, an, an MMA bout though. Hakeem Dawodu, five and out undefeated record with all five wins by KO or TKO. He's 24 years old. He's never been to decision. He's got uh, some strong Muay Thai, really good knees, and he's heavy-handed. Because I have not seen enough video footage of Magomedov, and I am pretty high on Hakeem Dawudo, uh, Dawudu. Um, I like what I see about Dawudu. He has, uh, he's real athletic, really good stand-up. Uh, I'll go with Hakeem Dawudo to win this by KO or TKO. And finally, Giga Chikadze fights Gil Gardado. Chikadze, no pro MMA bouts, so there's no video I can watch of the guy. 27 years old, training out of King's MMA. Uh, Gil Gardado, 4-1 record, 2 wins by Kertiko, 2 wins by Sub. He also has 1 loss by submission. 30 years old, training out of Extreme Couture. He's never been past the second round. I'll go with Gil Gardado to win that one. Okay, to recap. Um, on the main card, I have Lance Palmer beating uh, Alexander Almeida, Ozzy Degulovgov beating Nick Ron Webb, Shaman Marias over Robbie Peralta, Beck Bilat Magomedov over Josh Hill, and D Jake Hune beating Clinton Williams. On the prelims, I have Abu Bakar Nurmagomedov beating Danny Davis Jr., Jonathan Nunez over David Jordan, Hakeem Dawodu over Murat Magomedov, and Gil Gardado beating Giga Chikadze. So that's it for my prediction to World Series of Fighting 26, Palmer versus Almeida. If you have any comments, just leave them below. That's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.